periodic drought and continuous environmental degradation in the arid and semi-arid lands have caused great losses on lives and livelihoods. To address this devastating challenge, multiple coordinated resilience measures have been put in place to ensure these droughts do not necessarily become famines. The reason behind IGAD's involvement in this kind of activity started with uh, the Nairobi summit. It was a summit of heads of state in 2011, following the major draft of 2010-2011. And when uh, the IGAD member states met, they uh, uh, gave IGAD the mandate to lead and coordinate this drought resilience in initiative. Uh, this initiative is called now the IDRIZ, the IGAD Drought Disaster Resilience and Sustainability Initiative. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, it started uh, uh, um, in, in September 2011, uh, effective, effectively implemented since January 2013. Um, after that summit, we, IGAD, with our, uh, together with our members, we managed to mobilize uh, 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 some over a billion dollars for this type of resilience uh, activity that you are now uh, 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 witnessing in, in West Pokot, Konyao. The idea behind IGAD involvement again is also to bring the riparian countries of uh, Uganda and, uh, and Kenya, specifically in this uh, uh, cross-border area of Karaboja, to cooperate and, uh, and share resources whenever possible in a peaceful and, and sustainable manner. The main objective of the Drought Resilience Project is to enhance livelihood resilience of pastoral communities in drought-prone regions of Kenya, Uganda, and Ethiopia. In Kenya, the project covers West Pokot, Turkana, Baringo, Samburu, Laikipia, Marsabit, Isiolo, Mandera, Wajia, Garissa, Tana River, Lamu, Kajiado, and Narok. The uh, Drought Resilience Initiative is a 15-year uh, initiative in three phases of, uh, of five years each. We are closing the first phase, 2013-2017, uh, and we are planning for the second phase, 2018-2021, with, with, again with our uh, uh, member states and uh, major donor partner. Um, this specific project, the RPLRP, the uh, uh, Regional Pastoral Resilience Livelihood Program, has started in uh, 2014 and it's a five-year project so it will go up until, uh, my memory serves me right, December 20, 2019. We believe it, it has been a very successful phase one. As the end of the first phase is drawing close, Igad took a team of media champions to one of the project areas in West Pokot County, where an estimated 80% of the population are pastoralists. You know, when you say 80% of the Pokots are depending on livestock, with a population of around 900,000, you are talking about um, maybe around 750,000 people depending entirely on livestock. <coughs> And because of the little media attention given to pastoralists, so many issues are not being reported on what's happening. Livestock economy is one of the main flagship projects of West Pokot County. Since West Pokot governor was inaugurated, we, an embassy was put on pastoralism. That, that's why the whole ministry was called Ministry for for Agriculture and Pastoral Economy. And from the word go, we started with uh, dealing with the animal diseases. In the past years, this community lost as much as 40% of their livestock during extreme droughts. From the records we have, each year, West Pokot County lose about 40% of their stock to diseases. 40% is not a small number. Currently in this county we have about uh, 480,000 heads of cattle. So when say 40% of that is lost to disease, that's, that's a lot of animals. As it is believed among the pastoralist communities, animals have no tribe, no boundary, and hence no nationality. Therefore, they cross borders freely in search of pasture. 
West Pokot County and neighboring Uganda had to work on a formula to enable the vaccination program to continue when the animals cross the border. So we started a vaccination exercise against four diseases for the last three months. So far we have vaccinated 334,000 cows within only a period of three months because we wanted to deal with this 40% loss. And why are we doing that? We've realized, the governor has realized that we cannot build the economy of these people unless we put uh, cattle as a priority. And the way to do that is through vaccination. For West Pokot to be a livestock disease-free zone, the county must also forge a vaccination program relations with the internal neighbors. The governor is, uh, was trying, was putting all efforts to contact the governor for Turkana County, the same to Baringo County, because even if we really manage disease within West Pokot County, and nothing is being done in Transoya County, in Baringo, in Turkana, still, you know, the disease will not really be contained. With the disease control program taking shape, the other major project is ensuring that there is adequate pasture for livestock. I am ready to make the answer to the question. I will come back 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 to the question. I am ready. It's a World Bank uh, funded project that uh, has about five components uh, and what we are seeing here is under uh, component one which is natural resource management where we are trying to rehabilitate uh, range areas. Uh, as you realize, in this area of Konyao, uh, there, uh, there, 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 there are a lot of bushes. There are two species that have invaded the place, that is acacia and wild sisal, such that uh, there, there is no pasture for, for animals. So we engage the community members uh, through a, a meeting, and uh, we agreed that there is need for us to do something about these invasive species that have invaded this area. And, uh, uh, and they, 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 they identified the site for us, so they chose this particular site. So we came here, we engaged the community members, and then they did what is called selective bush clearing. Of course, uh, we, we did it together with the officers in charge of environment, uh, so that uh, we don't end up overdoing it and creating more problems. So you, as you can see around, we have not cleared all the, all the trees, there are some that have been left. And the aim is, once the, 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 we, we, we do the clearing, then of course this will now allow natural pastures to, re to regenerate. Like I said, this is a demonstration sort of for the community members to learn. So they, they, we are hoping that uh, they will also do the same uh, on, on their farms. This project is expected to spread in the whole county to cushion the pastoralists even during extreme droughts. This project really is new to us, very new. This is the first grass as we have seen. And we are seeing that it's very important to us as a community of Kapchok or Konyao people. This project is a man. The success of this program has caused a positive mind shift within the community. So, Konyesa sisi ya kwamba nyasi inaweza patikana pande hii. Kwa sababu kila mwaka tunahama pande wa Uganda tutakuta nyasi na maji. Lakini sasa hii imeleta moyo. Na tunaambia timu ya Resilient waendelee kutusaidia. 
ili tufungue kiwanja nyingi hapa The other program under Regional Pastoral Livelihoods Resilience Project is the building of water pans and boreholes. We had several meetings with the community members and what came out during those meetings when we were mobilizing the community members is that uh, in this particular area I think uh, the issue of uh, inadequate water is, 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 is actually a, a big problem. So they identified this as one of their, their, their projects. So the capacity of the water pan is 30,000 uh, cubic meters. So it's, it's, quite, it's quite huge. We are hoping that uh, once it is filled, there will be water almost throughout the year. Because the challenge we have in this area is that uh, the water pans that we have are small, and most of the times water does not last for, 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 for a long period. So we are hoping that problem will be, will be addressed here. Once complete, the water pan will be used in a sustainable and controlled way. Uh, it will be constructed in such a way that uh, the animals will not be drinking water directly from here. There will be some water traps on the other side. So the animals will be drinking water from outside the, the water pan. The community is so happy about this project that they are ever on site. What is happening? I always put a magic rib. Hata wakati wa mfua, hakuna machi. Kwa hifu, hii sasa ni amana sana. Kwa sipapu wapa, ni hiku kami sana. On site we love also two toilets, men and women, as well as a cattle trough and a fence. Yes, so that's basically about the project. And also um, the community have been cooperative. They've helped us uh, to do some casual work, and uh, so far so good. You need to go up there, <coughs> hook the lever, the lever through. The construction of the borehole is complete, and once the water is tested and proved to be fit for human consumption, then both the livestock and people will enjoy. So the, the borehole, the depth is about 130 meters, mm. and uh, the yield is able to pump uh, 4,800 uh, liters of water per hour. So it's, it's quite some amount of water. And then the water is pumped using a, a solar panel. And the capacity of that tank is uh, 30,000 liters. Yes, so it's, it's pumped with that pump. I mean the tank, and then now it flows through uh, gravity to the, the, the water troughs. Of course, we said uh, the water here is meant for for livestock, mm. but of course we have to take care of the, the humans also. So there is a drawing point somewhere up there for, for the old mamas to draw water. The community has already used their indigenous method to test the water and they are full of praise for the project. Pansa mesaidia wa mama, kusapa wa mama ndiyo endawa mtuni, napeleka mbusi, napeleka ngombe, na kupichota maji tena kutoka huko, na hako na mtoto, kwa mgongo, na pengina hato kuenda kufuwa nguwa huko, anapebana na yoyote. Kwa hivyo, tunashukuru kabisa kwa watu ya World Bank kwa kutufanyia hii. With healthy and well-fed animals, market access is another important factor to be looked into. We are praying that this road from Kapenguria up to this place, up to the border, will be tarmacked. Because what is happening at the moment is that uh, traders are forced to walk with the animals, to trade with the animals all the way up to almost the uh, sides of uh, Kapenguria. So with the construction of this cell yard, I think that will, will, will be a thing of the past. And like I said, if the road will be done, then that will also be, will be good. The other component of this project is to create alternative livelihoods for this pastoral community for future generations. We are not only targeting uh, livestock. We want to partner with the county government so that uh, we have some stalls for food stuff.